In this video, we're gonna take a look at six creative ways to use the magnetic mask inside of Final Cut Pro 11. The most common question I've seen about the magnetic mask is how can I use it to blur the background? Well, it's super easy. Just go on over into your effects, then locate your blurs category and you'll see Gaussian blur. Go ahead and click and drag it to apply that. Maybe you'll need to clean up the selection just a little bit. And once you're ready, you can go ahead and push analyze. Once it is completed analyzing, we can go up to the top right corner and push done. But you'll notice just our subject has been blurred and the background is staying perfectly clear. So we need to invert this selection. To do that, go on up to the top right corner where your Gaussian blur is and under our shape mask menu, we can click that and select invert mask. So now just the background is being blurred and our subject is staying perfectly in focus. The next creative effect you can do with the magnetic mask is of course add titles behind your subject. Now you might already be aware of how to pull off this effect, but stick around because I have a free effect which will make it even easier. The traditional way to do this is to push option, click and drag to duplicate our clip. We'll go to the magic wand, then go down to add magnetic mask. From there, we can go ahead and select our subject and we'll push analyze. Once Final Cut Pro is completely done with the analyzing, we can go ahead and press done. After that, we can push control T to add in a new title. We could scale up our title, change the font on it, and write in whatever word we want. With our title looking the way we want it, we can select the title in our timeline and push option down arrow, which will drop it in the layer stack and place it underneath our subject. So now we can push play and see that this title is perfectly masked by the subject. But you'll notice with this effect, I've had to duplicate it, which can slow down your processing speed on your computer and it can make your timelines look that much messier. So what if you could apply this all as a singular effect? Well, that's where this free download comes into play. You can get it off of my Patreon page. You don't need to sign up for anything and I'll have that linked down below as well. Once you've installed the effect, go on over into your effects browser and look up background text and we can drag this directly onto our clip. We'll find our subject, then we can push analyze just like any other effect. Once it is completed, we can go ahead and press done. And then in the top right corner, you'll notice we have our shape mask selection. So let's select invert mask. And now just like that, we have this background title applied onto our clip and it's only taking up one single layer down on the timeline. So this is going to improve performance and keep your timelines that much tidier. Plus you have access to all of the basic title controls that you could possibly need, as well as some nice animations. So we could go ahead and select arrange in and arrange out. And if I push play, you can see how the title comes in just like so. Another super fun way to use the magnetic mask is to add a nice outline effect. Now you could do just a basic outline effect, which you can find over in my motion tools plugin, or you can use my powerful, completely free plugin called Saber, which is completely inspired by Video Copilot Saber for After Effects. I'll go ahead and cut out my shot using just a typical magnetic mask on the duplicated version up top. And with that shot all cut out, we can push done. From there, we'll locate Saber in the effects browser and just drag it directly onto this shot. And already you can see the effect taking place. We can go in and adjust all of these various settings as necessary, maybe change the color up, adjust the detail scale, smoothing amount, cellular opacity, all of these controls and pushing play, you can see that we have this really cool looking effect directly on our subject in just a couple clicks. Another super powerful way to use the magnetic mask is by creating our own transitions. Let's move our playhead forward to the point where we want the zoom to start to happen. And from there, we'll go ahead and create a cut. After that, I'm gonna push option, click and drag to duplicate. So we have two of the exact same shot. Then with that top shot selected, let's go ahead and add a magnetic mask. From there, we'll push analyze and let Final Cut Pro do its magic. After that, we can go ahead and push done. Now we want this mask to actually create a cut out. So to do so, let's go on over into our blend modes and change it from normal over to silhouette alpha. So now you can see we have a cutout version of our subject. However, it's also cutting out the bottom most layer and we don't want that. So we only want this to affect the underlying layer. To fix that, let's go ahead and apply this into a compound clip. So we'll select both shots, right click, and then select new compound clip. We can push okay. And just like that, we have a nice cutout. However, you'll also notice that it's just an instant cut and we want it to have a slow fade. So to adjust for that, let's jump inside the compound clip. Let's go to the very beginning. We'll take our opacity, drag that all the way to zero. Then moving forward, we can set how long we want the duration of this animation to be. And we'll drag that up to 100%. After that, we can back out of the compound layer 
And if we push play, we can see how it slowly fades out. Finally, we're ready to add the zoom transition. So selecting our shot, let's go on over to our transform tool and select the crop tool. After that, we can go to the Ken Burns effect and making sure that the green box is the larger of the two, which will be our start point, we can locate the red box and drag that down as small as it will get. From there, we can place it directly in the center of our subject and push done. So now if we push play, we should have our subject walking and then we'll slowly zoom past her into the background shot. So that's one of the transition types you could make, but you can also use this for powerful wipe transitions. I have these two shots that I want to wipe on together and I wanna use this tree as the shape that it's wiping on the mask. Let's go ahead and move our playhead forward so we can see the entire subject of the tree. And then from there, we'll go ahead and add a magnetic mask. I'll select our tree, make sure that the selection looks good. That's looking pretty good to me. And from there, we can push analyze. Once it has tracked the tree completely off the scene, we can go ahead and track backwards. And there we go. So now we should have a solid red tree all the way through until it gets out of frame. Now, if I were to push done, you'll notice that we only see the tree taking place. We might want to adjust for it a little bit with the feather. We could bring the feather down just a little bit, but we also want to showcase the scene here on the left-hand side. I've seen a lot of people doing this with a draw mask, but there's a way better way inside of Final Cut Pro 11. Instead of using a draw mask, we can use the basic shape mask tool that's already applied with this magnetic mask. To do so, let's go up to the magnetic mask. We'll click on the shape mask set and we can select add shape mask. So not only do we have this shape mask taking place, but we also have the magnetic mask working on the same layer. That's just gonna keep our timeline that much cleaner and it's just a much simpler process. From there, I'll zoom out with command minus and we'll make the shape of this as large as it needs to be, cover that entire shot. Now I wanna give myself a little bit of extra distance here on the left side. That way the effect can look as good as it can and that's looking pretty solid. From here, if we wanted to, we could use the tracker in tandem with the magnetic mask by going to the top, pressing on this down arrow and changing the behavior from pinned to tracker over to offset from tracker, then going to the tracker settings and scaling this down to the tree. And that's one way you could do it, although I do find the tree gets a little wobbly on the edges. So for this tutorial, I'm actually just gonna do a manual track. So let's go to the shape settings, we'll push done. And over in our shape mask, let's go ahead and add a keyframe, making sure it's selected. We'll go back to the beginning of our shot somewhere in here and drag that mask over to the left side. And then we can go all the way till it's out of the frame and just drag this mask so it's completely filling our shot. So if I push play, we can see our mask wiping on in a really nice way. So that's the powerful takeaway with this particular effect is that you can use shape masks, color masks, and magnetic masks all together, and you can even use the object tracker if you need to. The last way to use the magnetic mask is for powerful clone effects where you have clones interacting with one another. This is going to be a callback to one of my really old tutorials where I built a clone effect, but in that tutorial, it took me probably a half hour to 45 minutes to pull this effect off. Now it's so much faster with the magnetic mask. I have this basic shot of me talking to the camera and then I pretend to get punched in the face. I held off until the chair stopped moving and then after that point, I stood up and I acted out the second part of the shot. Let's go to the point where I fall out of the frame and the chair stops moving right there and we'll create a cut on our timeline. Then let's move forward until my punch comes into the frame and I'll create another cut. Let's delete out that center section and we'll line up the two markers where my punch is supposed to be meeting my face. After that, I'll go ahead and move forward a bit till I find a good frame that shows most of my body. That's looking pretty good and we'll go and add a magnetic mask. For this particular effect, I'm also gonna include the microphone and let's go ahead and track backwards first. Then we can track forwards all the way up until I grab the chair. After that point, we shouldn't need the magnetic mask any further. So I'm gonna create a cut and we can delete the magnetic mask altogether off that shot. Selecting that shot, I'm gonna press done so that we have the cutout and let's just see how it's looking so far. That's looking pretty good. However, you'll notice the background is cutting out, so we need to keep the original background in a few frames. I'm gonna push P to get the position tool, and I'll just drag that off to the right side. And finally, I'm gonna add in a couple fades to cover up the effect that much more. Selecting the shot that has the entire background, I'm gonna push Command, Option, and Down Arrow, which will place it on the primary storyline, and we can just add in a basic fade with Command T. And then I'm going to slide this transition just a couple frames back under the original layer, and that seems to cover up the effect right there. Let's do the same at the very beginning of our shot. We'll find the beginning, push Command T to add a basic transition, and I'm just gonna shorten it way down. And let's go ahead and play back the entire effect. 
So that was six different effects you can do with the magnetic mask tool in Final Cut Pro 11. Also, you might wanna check out this video, which is a deep dive on the magnetic mask tool inside of Final Cut Pro 11. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.